guys, so today I am just going to be updating you on what has been going on the last couple weeks. I apologize for not uploading for two weeks. I was pretty set on actually doing my update last week, but Christmas was just way busier than I thought it was. I have Ryan's side of the family, my side of the family, and so between just going to be able to see everyone, I wasn't able to have time because especially I record my videos and upload them usually around the time that Christmas was, so the end of the week and that's when Christmas was. So. That is why I didn't upload last week. So I decided that I would just upload early this week for you guys so I could update you on everything that is going on. I am currently overdue. So I am over 40 weeks, <laughs> so you guys know. And I'm just, so because I'm over 40 weeks, I'm just gonna kind of do what's been going on the last couple weeks and how things have changed. So for me, there has been a few changes, nothing significant, just really that she is running out of room. I've definitely gotten to the point that I'm done being pregnant. <laughs> I'm ready to hold her in my arms instead of in my stomach. That's, that's kind of what I'm saying right now. There's something known as lightning where basically it's when the baby drops and you feel as if your kind of lungs and stomach area is just lighter because she's not crowding it as much. Um, the issue I think that I'm having, because she definitely has dropped, is that my torso is kind of short, so there wasn't much room for her to drop. So <laughs> my lungs and my stomach still crowded the same amount, and she still is up in my ribs with her feet, and so it hurts. So I have the bruised ribs still, obviously, um, which actually it's been less, but she does get crammed up there sometimes with her feet. But definitely I have felt that the bruising on my ribs has become less, so that's been nice. Obviously, because she is 40 weeks now, there really isn't much more developmental-wise. I think in the last few weeks when they are growing, the only thing that really continues developing is the brain, um, but she is perfectly, ready to come out. If she came out now, she should be perfectly fine, but she is the size of a watermelon, and that's kind of scary to think about pushing out a watermelon. <laughs> but at least baby's not shaped like a watermelon. So, but she is, um, I think weight-wise is what they're talking about the size of a watermelon. So that is really it for updates for her and development and how big she is and such. Other things for me, I have gotten nausea. I didn't have nausea really at all my first trimester, nothing my second, but the last couple weeks I have been getting it for sure, but it seems to be in the morning mostly or at night before I go to bed. I get really nauseous <laughs> and it's definitely not fun. And I've been getting headaches more so, it almost seems like sinus headaches because they're around my nose. And so I've been getting those kind of frequently too. So that has not been fun. Getting into some TMI stuff, I have lost my mucus plug completely. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's not really fun to think that's gross. But I have lost that, but that's a good sign because it means that labor is coming. Now there is the ability for that to grow back, but because I lost it so close to my due date, I don't think it is going to. And on Wednesday, I have an appointment. Now I wanna tell you guys kind of updates about my last two appointments because I don't think I told you about either, but I can't remember for sure. So. Two weeks ago, I had my appointment and she told me I was one centimeter dilated. She didn't give me a number for cervix softness, but her words were, wow, you're really soft and that baby is very low. <laughs> um, but she only told me I was one centimeter dilated. That's the only like number she gave me. And so I was like, oh, well, that's you know good news that my cervix is really soft because your cervix softens to get you ready to push the baby through. Um, and so I was like, well, that's good news. And so I went last week to my appointment, hoping obviously for some kind of progression because at that appoint at that last appointment, I was now 40 weeks. I had met with one of the men obstetricians. Now, at least in my area, it's pretty common that. You have your gynecologist, which works in an office with a bunch of other gynecologists, and then you choose your one, and that's the one gynecologist you see. Then once you get pregnant, everyone in that practice becomes your obstetrician. So it's basically whoever happens to be on call when you deliver is the one that delivers your baby. So you see all of them throughout your pregnancy, and that's the way that my doctors were. And I had not met this doctor yet because you guys know that I switched doctors a little bit last minute. And so I had not met him yet. And the first thing when he came in, he swore. <laughs> now you guys know that me and my husband don't swear. We've, we don't swear on our daily vlogs or anything like that. And it doesn't make me uncomfortable. I have people that are close to me in my family that swear pretty regularly. I'm used to hearing it. It was just strange because he's a doctor. I found it very unprofessional and just strange, especially because he'd never met me. He didn't know what I was comfortable with as his patient and he was swearing. I just found it to be very unprofessional for a doctor to swear. 
um, and I almost felt like he was doing it to try and make himself seem cool because I'm younger and to me it just made him uncool because it was just very unprofessional especially being a doctor that delivers babies I found it very strange and so that was kind of strike one for me not liking this doctor then the second part was he went to check me to check um, dilation cervix offering and stuff he checked me for maybe three seconds. I kid you not, maybe three seconds. For those of you that have had babies, you know that it's not very long at all. The last two times I was checked, it was probably at least 20 or 30 seconds. And when he was done checking me, he didn't say anything, like <laughs> at all. Um, the last two doctors told me immediately what everything, what was going on and how things were down there. Um, and he didn't say anything. He just kind of, it almost seemed like he was talking to himself in his head. And he went over to his computer and started typing things in. And eventually I got annoyed <laughs> and was like, am I the same? What's going on? And he said, I think you're the same, but I didn't want to force it. So now we're going to get into a little TMI information. <clears throat> I know at least for me, when I meet with a guy gynecologist or a guy um, obstetrician, first thing you look at are the size of his hands because they're going to be checking you in places. Um, <laughs> which is why, at least for me, I prefer a woman gynecologist. That was not the issue. So he had lady fingers for sure. So when you, some of you may be thinking, well, he's got man hands, so he didn't want to force it. So that's why he didn't really fully check you. No, he had lady fingers. That was not the issue. So the only thing he told me was, I think you're the same. And I'm just kind of sitting there like, what does that even mean? Like I'm 40 weeks. I don't want to hear, I think. I want to hear for sure what's going on because I am now 40 weeks, I'm full term, I want to know what's happening. And it more felt like he was just, it was almost like he was treating the appointment like it was I was eight weeks as opposed to 40 weeks. And it was just very frustrating. It was like pulling nails to get him to tell me anything. He wouldn't, like nothing. And it's not even that I just want her out, you know, obviously I want to make sure that she is ready to come out when she's ready. Um, it's just frustrating when you're 40 weeks and your doctor doesn't really tell you anything about what's going on. And he just wouldn't say a word and he didn't check anything else because he didn't want to force it even though he had lady fingers. I know, sorry, this is interesting conversation to be talking about, but it comes with pregnancy. You can't get away from it and being a woman. So <laughs> I don't really, he just seemed a little off. I <laughs> like, it wasn't like he was rude. He was not rude at all. He was just weird. Um, so I don't know. I really hope that he is not the doctor that's on call, but basically I just kind of feel like I went in for my 40 week appointment and got no answers at all. But then after that, he tells me, I want you to come in early next week. So this week, as you guys see this, um, and get a ultrasound and NST and do a regular appointment. And of course, the first thing I'm thinking, because he hasn't told me anything, is do you think something's wrong or is it just normal because now I'm over 40 weeks? And now I know that it's because I'm over 40 weeks. It's normal for them to check and make sure that the fluid levels around baby are good, your placenta is working and such, and then the stress test to make sure baby's moving enough. Um, so I know now that that is normal for over 40 weeks. But of course, it's my first baby. I had no idea and it just seemed like he told me nothing and then all of a sudden he wanted me to get all these tests done but didn't tell me why. And so it was just very frustrating. <laughs> um, but so Wednesday though, this Wednesday at 7.45 a.m., I am going to have my ultrasound and NST and my regular appointment. Now, if anything from the ultrasound or the NST come back um, as something they see as an issue, they will immediately send me over to the hospital to be induced. Otherwise, I will set up an induction date to be induced if she doesn't come by 42 weeks. So that's basically what's happening right now. So there is a chance that Wednesday I could go to my appointment and go over to the hospital shortly after instead. So we will find out. And of course, I am keeping you guys updated about when I go into labor, when she's here on Instagram, ooh, missed my finger, on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, and Facebook. So if you guys are wanting to know when I go into labor, check there because I'm just not going to have time to even do a cell phone vlog and tell you guys, hey, I'm in labor and put it up on YouTube. Um, especially because we have our daily vlogs, so there's still gonna be daily vlogs. And more than likely though, our daily vlog, um, the one where I'm in after I go into labor, is going to be late probably. So 
Fingers crossed though that we get it up um, semi-ly at a decent hour. But if you guys wanna be first to know when I go into labor and what is going on, definitely follow me. Instagram will probably be the first place I post, then Twitter and Facebook. So go ahead and make sure you guys follow me those three places, which is always in the YouTube description box below. And you guys can go ahead and follow me there and you will be the first ones to find out <laughs> when it's happening. So Wednesday I have that appointment and hopefully though, fingers crossed everything is okay. I would much rather obviously not be induced if I don't have to. I want her to come on her own time. So I'm hoping that everything comes back positively and no issues. That is really going to be it for today's update. There wasn't much else for me to update you guys on just because it's 40 weeks and she's pretty much done developmentally wise. Obviously I'm getting to the point now where I'm ready to hold her in my arms like I said and not in my stomach anymore. It's just very uncomfortable now and <laughs> I'm ready to not have to pee every five minutes. That would be fantastic. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do my bump shot for you guys now and then I will say goodbye. So this is my stomach at 40 weeks. I just kind of feel like it doesn't come out as far as it used to. Um, and she's definitely lower, but we shall see guys. And there's the back. And that's it, 40 weeks. As you can see, my belly button definitely sticks out. Um, before, if I was wearing maybe one layer, you would see it, but now two layers, sometimes three layers, you can see <laughs> my belly button sticking out. So hopefully she is getting ready to come join us. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. I'm hoping that my next video will be with a baby. Hopefully I have a little baby reveling in my arms to share with you guys next time. So I will see you guys either next week with something else, 41 week update, I hope not, or with a meat revelin or possibly my newborn cloth diaper sash. So I will see you guys then. Bye. This don't have actually, but this allows you so you can see, you can look down, make sure that your baby's latched correctly, make sure that she's actually feeding, not distracted, um, and you can just be able to see her without exposing yourself to the world. So um, this one 